Hello Mr. Viewer and welcome to yet another money income video, this time on Basilisks. And yes I know you are most likely waiting for me to make the Desert Naga experience video, but at this point I already had this area tested for over a week and if I don't make a video on it, it's just going to end up in some folder left alone and forgot for eternity. Just like the new Sauce and Schultz experience test which I already have tested and the video is probably never going to come out. So for today I thought that uh, since it's already been one year since I made my first ever Black Desert video and uh, that one was also on the Basilisk's money income, then why not take that one and compare it to some newer data and see if this area is still worth grinding these days for purely profit. Back when I made the first Basilisks video, I was still playing on my Ranger and I wasn't even using my Awakening, because back then we didn't even have Awakening on the Europe server. And also I remember how I had to run the game at 24 FPS just to have it on high settings. But please do not go check it out because uh, it's a very old video and it's super cringy. And I would most likely die a little bit on the inside if you were to actually go and check it out. So just take my word when I say that you don't really have anything to see in there. So let's get started. To begin I will first point out the obvious stuff just to avoid any further confusion later on in the video. So I am currently playing a level 60 wizard which is still not level 61 and you can find my gear score and my gems linked in the video description just in case you're interested in that. For my pets I am using 2 tier 1 pets and 2 tier 3 pets which were always on agile mode, even though for this area it's not really that useful because the mob density is pretty low. My node level here was 0 simply because I sold it a long time ago and the rotation is the one that you see on the screen. This is most likely not the most uh, efficient rotation but it's the go to default rotation that I always pick when I come here. Even though I come here pretty uh, rarely, I still just go to this rotation and never even bother to check the others. So if you know any other rotation that is more efficient like the ones inside the cave then just bump up the numbers a little bit at the end and I hope that fixes your problem. This is basically the same rotation that I did on my first video one year ago, but this time I added some groups on the left and right side of it to increase the rotation to match my clearing speed, because nowadays I clear faster than I used to and the mobs are not enough. So with that all being said, let's now get into the part that contains some data. So just like on my previous two videos, for this one I also grinded about 10 hours. And again I started from Heidel and I returned back here. In total I grinded the 10 hours during a period of 3 days and it was all done before the Black Zone Droplet event even started. So for those of you who were wondering, everything that I have in the video is from before the Black Zone Droplet event was active. I'll begin with the first day which was a session of about 1 hour and 49 minutes of grinding, during which I got my first Basilisk belt drop after only 40 minutes of grinding. So as a surprise instead of getting pieces I got the actual belt after only 40 minutes of grinding and that was everything important that happened in the first day. After I finished grinding I went to Shakatu to store everything in the bank and that was it for the first day. Also I should point out that I was using Shakatu as my main city for all of the 10 hours of grinding. The second day was actually the longest one out of all three and this one was spread during two different runs of 2.5 hours and 2 hours, adding to a total of about 4.5 hours of grinding for the second day. And the more important things that happened during these 4.5 hours of grinding were the second Basilisk belt which I got after 1 hour and 50 minutes of grinding and then some more ring pieces and pin pieces that I got after that. 
If I add up the time grinded from the first day, then the second belt was actually dropped after about 3.5 hours of grinding. So if I were to stop the entire test after only 4 hours, like I did on my first uh, 1 year old video, then I would have 2 basilisk belt drops in only 4 hours. Obviously, I didn't stop the test here because there is a third day to talk about. So, the third day was a total of 3.5 hours of grinding, spread in 2 hours before the maintenance, and then another about 1.5 hours after the maintenance. Keep in mind, this was about 1 week ago, so it's not the maintenance that happened this Wednesday. In uh, these three and a half hours of grinding, I did not get third basilisk belt, but I did get some more pin and ring pieces. And if I were to add all of those up, I still cannot make a third belt by combining the pieces. So after the ten hours of grinding, the result was two basilisk belts and whatever else you can see on the screen when the loot table is going to pop up. So if you want to know more details about the loot and what I got after each session, you can just see those on the screenshots. Now, before I get into the part where I show you the money per hour values, I would have to remind you that these are the item values that I'm using for this video and they are actually the current marketplace values from the Europe server. So if you are not playing on the Europe server, you will have to add your own values on the loot table and make your own conclusion. Because for example, on the Europe server, at the moment the scrolls are worth 1.9 million. And as far as I know, on NA, they are a lot cheaper. Also, I took these values about one day before making this video. So, at the moment, there is an event for the Halloween which drops a Forest Fury from a quest. And as a result of that, every single Black Spirit crystal is sold out on the marketplace. And the assault gems that drop from Basilisks are 3.6 million sold at max price. This is something you may want to keep in mind because later on they may drop in price if there is no further uh, Forest Fury event. So with that all in mind, I will have two different conclusions. The one on the left side is going to be the raw profit from the items if you just want to keep them and the one on the right side is using the marketplace tax with a value pack. So for that one you will basically sell everything to the marketplace and then collect the money using a value pack. Also, before I forget, since on Europe these uh, scrolls are 1.9 millions, you can actually make more profit if you sell the individual pieces to the marketplace than you would get to actually make the scrolls, do the run and then sell everything to the marketplace. So for the purpose of this video to get as much profit as possible, I was selling each individual piece to the marketplace even though you can see them combined on my inventory. That was simply because I didn't have have enough space to store all of the 18 scroll pieces. So with that all being said, since the purpose of this test was to include the downtime, the first result is the one that includes the 41 minutes of downtime. So with that in mind, the conclusion is 16.2 million per hour if you want to keep everything and 14.4 million per hour if you want to sell everything to the marketplace. For the second conclusion, if you don't really care about the downtime, then excluding those 41 minutes of downtime, the profit is about 17.4 million per hour if you want to keep everything and 15.5 million per hour if you want to sell everything to the marketplace. For these values, I was using the current marketplace value for the Basilisk belt, which is only 30 millions. So I'm not sure if that one is going to go up in price in the future, especially since with the new Kama Silver belts, the Basilisk belt is no longer best in slot. So if it goes up in price, you can obviously get more profit. For example, one year ago, when I made the first video, this belt was worth around 60 million. So it was twice the amount you can get for it at the moment. 
Also, I didn't take into consideration the extra belt pieces that I got because I wasn't able to combine a third basilisk belt. But if I were to use my own pieces from my storage, I could combine a third belt and say that these are the actual profit values. But to be honest, getting two basilisk belts in 10 hours is pretty good luck and getting a third one is pretty much impossible. So if you want to believe these numbers, you can, if not, you can just ignore them. For example, on my video one year ago, I got 12 million per hour as a final uh, profit by giving the Basilisk Belt a 60 million value and using 20 million for the one piece that I got. So even though I got no Basilisk Belt and not enough pieces to combine for a full belt, I still gave 20 million to that one single piece to boost up the numbers a little bit. And even though I got 12 millions back then, I still got even more profit this time. At the end of the day, grinding at basilisks is just pure RNG because your main income is the basilisk belt and your secondary income are the assault gems and the scrolls. So basically the more luck you have, the more profit you're going to be making. But with a value of maybe 16 millions per hour, I would say it's still not worth it to grind here, especially if you saw my previous Kadris and Bandits videos. So if you want to grind for pure money and also get some experience in the same time, I would probably have to suggest uh, grinding the elites at Gahaz Bandits and Kadris instead of going to Basilisks, because here the experience is pretty much non-existent. Since I'm getting close to the end of the video, to give a final conclusion on Basilisks, I would have to say that this area can have some quite nice money income values if you have a lot of RNG luck and if the Basilisk belt price is not too low. So for example at the moment with 30 millions per belt, I'm not sure if I actually want to grind here. And also since this area has some quite terrible experience values, I would say that you shouldn't grind here unless you are level 60 or best case scenario level 61. So if you are level 61 and you don't care about experience and you feel lucky today, you might want to grind here. But if not and if you want some better experience rates and consistent money income values then maybe consider grinding somewhere else. And with that I think I took enough of your time and I'm going to end the video here. If I miss something you can probably find it on a comment or in the video description and if you want to add something to this topic or just comment something that I missed or something like that then leave a comment down below and we can discuss about this further. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time.